So uh, yeah, today uh, we're going to go over what it looks like to do a quick deploy of uh, the Neo4j Graph GraphQL on uh, a uh, AWS serverless Lambdas using SST, which is a, uh, a way to manage our stacks. So uh, real quick about me, <clears throat> uh, here at Graphable and myself, we're big uh, fans of infrastructure as code. And uh, I do uh, so, uh, some DevOps, data analytics, I like to sling code places, API stuff, and then work in Neo4j and SQL. So quickly on uh, this SST that I mentioned. Um, so this is uh, the framework that we're using. It helps us manage all of our stacks uh, when, we're, when we're building out our applications. And it's uh, a really easy way to share information between stacks. Uh, and so we'll look at that in a little bit, um, but it allows us to uh, deploy uh, our all of our apps in many different uh, stacks and have that information easily accessible to other stacks and then manage stack dependencies, et cetera. Uh, SST in particular also allows us to deploy it locally and test locally and to uh, see all our logs, all of our logs, and uh, then also even query our database locally uh, as well. And they offer uh, a lot of templates, many different templates for POCs and then also just for quick starts of the project. And so we'll use one of those today as well. And the so today we're doing it on a serverless, uh, Lambdas. And so that's gonna be, uh, it's gonna allow us to take advantage of how Lambdas auto manage a number of different things. So uh, the authentication, for example, it's uh, managed. We can we can have an authentication stack. And Sam, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Um, is there any way that you could go to full screen for us? Ah, uh, yes, probably. Um, uh, switch displays. Is that no? That's probably not the right display yet. No, let me, you know what, how about this? How about I put you on full screen here and then we just won't see you talking if you're okay with that. Okay, that yeah, that's fine. If, yes. There you go. Sorry. Okay, thanks so much. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so we'll have we'll have authentication in a different stack and uh, that's all handled behind the scenes and our server, we don't have to handle all that through, through a server. Uh, Lambda also does all your, of course, your server administration is, is not required. That's all hand it, handled. It's highly available. It's highly scalable too. And uh, it's it's uh, pretty cheap. So it's a great solution uh, for this sort of application. So without further ado, we're gonna go into a live demo <clears throat> and uh, that should, there we go. So the first thing that we'll do is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to use one of uh, SST's templates. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. I'm in a brand new project. I'm using WebStorm. I'm going to go ahead and fetch that. This might be a little bit small. I'll make the font bigger. But essentially, it's going to ask me to do a project name. I'm going to call it my nodes uh, demo one. And that's going to pull down the template. There we go. I'm going to CD into my nodes demo one. OK, so then the first thing I'll do is I'm going to do an NPM install to get everything running. I'll also show uh, the package structure. So I'm going to go a little fast at first here uh, because it, I'm going to go I'm going to go ahead and deploy it to live. And so that's going to be deployed to our AWS instance. And then we'll query it. And it takes about three minutes to deploy. Um, serverless uh, SST here is going to deploy everything that we need. All of our infrastructure is all handled on the back end during deployment. And that's going to be super convenient for us because it's going to manage all of our buckets, any uh, all of our stacks, and um, have all that ready for us. Uh, all right, so there we go. We got that. I'm going to go ahead and install as well because it wasn't in the... Uh, package here. I'm going to install Apollo server because that's what we're going to use. And then while that's installing off screen, I'm going to go ahead and configure my uh, environment folder here real quick. So let me do that. And I'm going to put in my uh, Neo4j password and URI, etc. 
So that's good. So quickly here on the stacks. So the way the way it's managed, we got our stacks here. Index.ts is uh, where we're managing all of the all of the stacks. So if I had a bunch of different stacks, they'd be in here, and I would deploy them, and I would put them in the order that they uh, that I want them deployed. So if they've got dependencies, I'd want to deploy my buckets first, uh, et cetera. And uh, that'll handle all the deployment for us. So the only code that we're going to need to do here is I'm going to add some tags because we um, always tag all our stuff for AWS instance. So I've got some pre-filled tags here. Add those in. And then I'm just going to set my environment variables, in this case here, so that when it deploys, my environments will be there. Uh, normally, uh, we would not put them here as environments for the uh, password, et cetera. You'd want to fetch that uh, from some secure uh, password, uh, the password manager inside uh, AWS. But for today, we'll just do it this way. All right, so that's all the config that I need to do for this index.ts. Next uh, is our function that's going to hold our uh, Apollo server. It's going to be our, this is going to be our Lambda function here. So we do need to do a few changes to this. So I'm going to walk through them <clears throat> real quick here with you guys. Uh, the first thing we'll need to do is we'll pull in the, uh, we're going to pull in our password and stuff. These are our environment variables at this point because it'll be deployed. Once it's deployed, these will automatically be saved as environment variables on our Lambda. Uh, next, we're going to need to import um, the Neo4j GraphQL because this is this is set up. It'll be using a uh, just a vanilla version of GraphQL. So we're going to want to install that. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So I'm going to install Neo4j GraphQL, and then I'm going to install the driver as well. As soon as that's done. Uh, as far as the type defs are concerned, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hard code them today. Uh, but there's some better ways to uh, have them not be hard coded, uh, and you use the introspector to to grab them and then potentially store them in a separate stack or in a, in a um, DynamoDB that we could have deployed in a separate stack. Uh, but we'll go ahead and just add those in right now. And so these are I'm using. Sorry, I meant to mention I'm using just the default a database in Aura. Uh, that's the uh, the movies database. And so just the standard one here, this is my uh, type depths here. I won't be doing any uh, custom resolvers today. Um, OK, so I just installed the uh, the driver. I added the driver and the new 4 GraphQL. So this was the template uh, way of generating the server. Uh, ours is going to be a little bit different because of how, uh, how the new 4 GraphQL works. We want to pull in that new 4 schema. So we're going to set that up uh, slightly differently. So First thing we'll do is we're going to declare our Neo4j driver like that. And so I'm passing in the um, username and password. And then I'm going to grab the uh, gra the schema from Neo4j GraphQL. And I'm passing in the uh, type deaths right here. So I'm going to shrink that for now. OK. And actually, sorry, I meant to it's bigger. Let's go around. That's probably a little better for everybody. Sorry. OK. Um, all right, next is uh, our server. So uh, like I said, the, the server is going to be initialized a little differently because we need to make it async. And uh, we have to wait for the, uh, the schema to get returned. Um, so that's going to be slightly different. So we're going to, I'm going to delete all of this because we'll, well, yeah, I'll delete all this because we won't be using it. But we're actually going to fold this into our async call. Uh, right here to initialize our server. And uh, then the last thing is we need to export out the uh, handler that's being expected from this Lambda. I'll put that underneath here. And so here we go. Uh, and that should be uh, basically it. Uh, we're exporting our handler. So you can see here that we're uh, waiting for our server to be initialized. And once it's initialized, uh, we'll pass in the event. Uh, that's going to have our the query that's sent to the API, and that will be sent back. So the I'm going to go ahead and first I'm going to go ahead and run 
uh, I'm going to run npm start and run this. And that is going to ask me to pick a, uh, yeah, pick a stage name. So I'm just going to call this nodes, uh, nodes123. It's going to be my stage. And that is going to start my deployment. So while that's deploying, I'm going to go over a few other things. <clears throat> so I didn't go into my stack because uh, I didn't need to make any changes here. The template was sufficient. Uh, but what my stack is doing is this is all in my st the stack right here. We're declaring the API as a GraphQL API, and we're making we're spinning up a server essentially that uh, is using the code that's in my functions slash lambda handler. So that's that's what we just modified over here. And uh, the cool thing is that that's going to deploy Lambda that's just going to be running. One Lambda is going to be continuously running. And as I call it, uh, because uh, Lambdas can be invoked multiple times concurrently, uh, many times uh, concurrently, uh, each time if, uh, if I need to handle all the load balancing that's auto handled for me, uh, it'll just create a new Lambda, I'll spin it up real quick. And they, they start up very, very fast. And then it'll just stay active for a little bit. And then it'll spin itself down. Uh, as soon as it's not needed. So that's handled here. And this is basically my API stack. Normally, I would also have an authorization stack or authentication stack. Uh, they would then uh, call this API. I can export anything out of this stack. And I would just set the authentication to use uh, to, to, to be part of this API. So I could I would import the authentication stack in here and set it there. I'm not going to show those different things here, but um, uh, that's just uh, the advantage that we have with uh, by using SST. Um, and there we go. So that just deployed the app. So provided I did everything correctly over there, this is always the best part of doing live demos, we should be able to uh, see this being deployed or see this uh, running. And then once it's deployed, we'll be in a live edit mode which means that I can make any changes to my Lambda here and it'll get auto redeployed immediately, uh, which is great for, for testing. And I'll just, I would just be running this locally and uh, I can make any tweaks and changes and I'll see that right away reflected. Okay, it looks like it wasn't quite done. All right, so it looks like we're gonna have to, have to update a little bit. So I'll wait for that to finish and I'm see, checking to see if I got it. we got any questions rolling in. While that finishes up. And let's see what else. I think that's it. And we'll even try, we'll venture a postman call as well. Because we'll it'll spit out the link uh, that we're gonna use. Yeah, <clears throat> good question. So, and any links uh, with some code? Well, uh, actually, I did write a blog that covers exactly what I just did here um, on our graph on our graphable.ai uh, website, and uh, we'll be pushing that to social media here after after our uh, after this nodes conference. But uh, it's already up and accessible. Uh, so, if you just go to graphable.ai and go to our blog section, you will see this uh, there. Okay, so here we go. Uh, that's going to be our API link here. And I'm just going to paste that in over here. I got a query ready to go. And we're going to see if we can set it. And then the other nice thing uh, that I mentioned earlier. So here, here we go. So we see some activity. And I just sent that. So you can see the, direct, the logs right directly there. And there's my query. And it's returning the information from the database here. Uh, then the other cool thing is that it gives us this console that we can click and open up Oop, went over here and this is also a great way to explore all of my the posts that are going in the requests uh, i'll be able to see all my stacks right now i just have uh, one stack here but i can also uh, query my database directly here uh, so if i paste in my query here and be able to hit it Oop. Yet. Hi, Sam. We're uh, at copy. time. Okay. I'm so sorry. Yep. I can give you another couple minutes. Nope. Um, I think we're good. Yeah.
Uh, so I, uh, okay. I missed up the query here, but we're good. All right, okay. that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sam. We really appreciate it. All right, thank you all.